Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. I've got Mike Hardington with me from Ionic today. We're going to be learning how to use Ionic with uh, React. So, Mike, thanks for coming on, man. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. This is great. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to I'm going to make a confession. We have been showing up at the same conferences now for years and you're always talking about Ionic and I have never even looked at one of I don't even know what Ionic does. It breaks my heart. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like I, I know all about what you do and all the things that you do. And what well, that's, Gatsby is. that's why we're here. I want to know all the things about what you do. <laughs> so. I'm assuming you just want to know a little bit about Ionic. Um, yeah. So Ionic itself is a collection of like components and uh, its own mini like design system for building out apps that work great on not only like native iOS and native Android, but as like progressive web apps or even something a little bit further with like Electron and using like a full desktop app. Okay. Awesome. So. Um... Today, I think the, for the scope of what we're doing, we're going to probably just play with React, um, see if we can build something. So how does one start? Like, do I need to install things or like get an account uh, or anything? So, so preferably you would, you would have NPM installed and be able to go from there. But really, uh, it turns out really I, I do have NPM installed. What? <laughs> You're like five steps ahead of me. Um, yeah, I mean, for the most part, I'm going to preface this. This is beta. We're going to mess with the Ionic React version. That is beta. Okay. Um, so there be dragons if they exist. Um, but I think we're, I think we should be fairly good. So, cool. I mean, for the most part, we're just going to use like create React app to actually start an app. Okay. So if you have that installed, that's good to go. If not, actually, npx create React app will do the same thing. Let's do it. Yeah. Now, so I, I have another confession. Need... I've literally never used create React app. What? I yes. Yeah. I will. I mean, I assume with your own kind of own CLI, you have everything kind of uh, like oh, whoops. handled uh, by itself. Yeah, we like. I mean, I guess Gatsby is the, one of the ways that we describe it is it's like Create React App Plus because it has a bunch yeah. of extra stuff. Um, but yeah, the when I when Create React App came out, I was working at IBM where we already had all these like boilerplates and you know proprietary packages that we had to use, so I couldn't use Create React App. And then I went straight to Gatsby, so I just kind of like stepped over uh, the the Create React App stuff, um, which is weird. Like. It feels like this is such a foundational part of the React ecosystem now, and I'm like, I actually don't know how this works. <laughs> it's 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 a foundation, but it's really lightweight. Like in terms mm. of what it actually provides, you get like a build, a watch, uh, and then eject. I think is what all you get out of the project. Mm -hmm. But you know, it gives you enough to get going and uh, nothing more. Nice. Uh, cool. All right. So we have ourselves a create react app. Um, and I assume that, uh, we need to install additional things now. Yes. Yeah, so next, uh, we got a few, like a small collection that we need to install, uh, of at Ionic react, uh, react router, and then react router Dom react. So actually we're going to go back. This at Ionic React, it, yeah, at Ionic uh, scope package name. Got it. And then React Router mm -hmm. and React Router DOM. Is that is that it? Yep, that's all you need. Got it. So there's like a total other option that we could do of um, TypeScript if we had started off the project that way. We could have pat, pulled in like all these different types for React and for React Router DOM, but we don't really need it since we're we're not really doing anything with TypeScript today. That's good. I, I'm going to have to do another live stream later where somebody teaches me TypeScript because I also haven't used that. It's it's like the programming, but with training wheels. It's so much better and safer. <laughs> 
I, I do I do like the idea of training wheels. Uh, I need someone to save me from myself. Uh, okay, so <laughs> we've got uh, a package JSON setup. We've got the Ionic, um, React, some some scripts. Um, do we need to change anything here? No, this is uh, basically every once all that stuff is installed, we're we're good to go. Okay. So, uh, what we're going to actually do from here is go inside of our uh, thinking on the fly inside of our app.ts or app.js. You can probably think about TypeScript too much. <laughs> uh, and what we're going to want to import is uh, a CSS file first. Okay. So we could probably even just get rid of all all of this fun stuff. Just like drop this and basically everything that's not that root div. Got it. And then we're going to import some CSS right here. So we're going to import from uh, at Ionic. Uh, what am I, what am I importing? Uh, we're going to be, uh, it's oh, gonna right, be, right, right. It's a yeah. CSS file. So I'm, uh, we're going to import from core core CSS CSS. And then if auto completion is going to work, we're going to say ionic dot bundle. It's it. Nope. Not working for me. Oh, sad face. All right. Well, let's back up a little. See if that that should be right, yeah. Uh, let's maybe, maybe we yeah, just... if we want to inspect node Same. modules, ionic core CSS, ionic dot bundle dot CSS. Yeah, so cool. it's right. It's there. Apparently, my I don't know. I I have some settings changed on this uh this like teaching version of VS Code that makes yeah. things a little interesting. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so we've inst we've installed the CSS, and that's it, right? Mm -hmm. The whole app is built. More or less, we can just you know <laughs> sit back and just relax and let everything else be done from there. Um, really, actually, we could probably start importing some components if we want, okay. uh, or you know test out what we have available to us. So, do you have auto import set up on VS Code, or do we it want to manually? Should work. Let's try it. All right. Well, let's. We're going to create first our uh, a card component because it's like the safest default that we can go with. Um, but we are actually going to just use the Ionic card component. So we'll say Ion card. Ion card. Mm -hmm. And my auto import is definitely not working. So. <laughs> so do... we'll import. Uh... Is it a named export? Or... Yeah. The name. Oh, uh, yeah. The app we're going to export, we're going to import Ion card from at Ionic React. Okay. And once we have that kind of closed down and finished up, we can just put whatever content we want in there. So it could be just like an H1, just to say hello from uh, Ionic. Uh, okay. We'll save and then start up our live reload server. Is that start or is that. Uh should be start cool oh, you're a yarn user that's what create react app told me to do create react app can be wrong why does what what um sure you can touch my stuff oh it opened the wrong thing um yeah. okay that is a different browser oh this is uh yeah let me clear the the joys of of local storage um okay it's clear <laughs> got it all right and now we'll try that again what are you it's doing? like cached all the old content that we have available there we go okay we have an actual working app now um, yeah. So cool. All right, we got a we got a card. Yeah. So I mean, there's a lot of stuff that we can do from here. Like we could uh, create some like basic content, like a little placeholder. Like if you ever uh, looked at the Apple 
uh, iTunes kind of like their now trending page on their on the, in the app store. Uh, and only get like okay. that nice, like they get this nice full bleed image and then some padded content towards the bottom. So let's kind of just play around with that real quick and see what we get can get. Yeah, let's do it. What uh, are are the are there like more components that we need? Yep. So from here, we're going to import uh, ion card content. Tent. Okay. And that's I think that's yeah that's the only one that we'll need. Um, we can go here and card content is its own component. Uh, we can move our text inside of it. So okay. The way way we can think of this ion card is basically full width um, with no padding. So uh, yeah. once we put the content in there, we get some kind of space and it's a little bit more inset. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that looks, we, it looked, it looks like it added some typography stuff too. Mm -hmm. Cool. So we can actually change the whole typography for the entire app. Um, if we switch out this div for another Ionic component, Okay. So we're, we'll switch out Ion app. Like so? Mm hmm. And then rename these divs. Let's reload the server, do its thing. Okay. So it's already, it's kind of like already done because of the card and the card content. But if we were to just have like any random. Yeah. So now if I just yeah. put some, some other. Let's see, H2, can't have two H1s on the same page. That would be ridiculous. Where's your accessibility? Okay. And so now, just an H2 dumped on the page, and, yep, there's some, some typography applied to it. It's not just a, a, like, default browser thing. So that's cool. Um, yeah. I assume there's a, a reason that it got thrown all the way to the bottom. So the entire app layout is actually using Flexbox. Oh, so, okay, I get you. So Ion app is like our, the way we have everything kind of structured a little bit from an internal like mindset is we have nothing, we try to put as little as we can on a global CSS scope. Mm -hmm. So as we start structuring out our, uh, our app and our pages, we'll have this global Ion app context that will set the base uh, font values, set the base layout. So it'll automatically use Flexbox for everything. And as we start adding content, we can have that resize automatically and just uh, have this really nice uh, cascading effect. Nice, okay, cool. Um, so yeah, what, uh, so should we build like, we had briefly talked about doing a, a to-do app? Yeah, so, Let's uh, well yeah, let's let's build that to do app and um, what we're actually going to do, uh, this is like a really nice kind of place for us to like remove the card and everything and start to add like React Router. Okay. So I I, I I've assumed you've have you touched React Router at all? I've used React Router. Uh, it's been a while because we we switched over to Reach Router in uh, mm -hmm. in Gatsby. But then I just mm -hmm. heard that they're going to recombine React and, and Reach routers. So that's, uh, I also think the APIs are pretty much the same. So I think, what am I doing? I want, uh, is it a named import? Maybe I should look this up. Do you remember so, all this well, off the top of your head? Yeah. So what it actually okay. is, is we're <laughs> going to, uh, we'll do like a quick named import. Um, and I think it's called browser router. Browser router. Mm-hmm. Um, typically, we, uh, from yeah, React Router DOM. Okay. Uh, and you know we could rename this if we want, but we'll just keep it like Browser Router. It's easier. Actually, this is a nice. This is an interesting React Router thing. Uh, apparently, Router needs to be at the root level. Oh. Last time I was told that, or at least last time I was told this, uh, the. The dev tools yelled at me saying, what are you doing not putting React Router at the root? How dare you? Um, okay. So... I could be totally wrong, too. And <laughs> this just kind of confused everything. Uh, I, yeah, I, don't, I haven't used React Router in long enough that I don't actually remember. Um, 
So I would say this is probably a good safe move. Um, yeah. But then we want a route, and the route comes in from React Router, right? Right. Um, we'll also want to have a component from Ionic as oh, well okay. to uh, handle this. Actually, nope. Route comes from React Router DOM. Oh, does it? Oh. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, yeah, I guess, like, the way that they had it set up is they have everything split out. So if you're just using the DOM implementation, in case you want to do, like, React Native or something, you could have the same libraries just pull from the uh, implementation that you want. Ah, okay. Um, and my props are what? Do, a, do we just do, like, a... No, we don't do that. Is it path? Yep, we get a path. And inside of this, we're going to use like a little forward slash colon uh, tab. And we can just call this whatever we want. Um, we can make it go to nothing. We could just make it go to home. Uh, so what do you feel like this page should be called or this route should be called? Uh, I mean, we can we can make this one... Uh... Wait, are we are are we looking at at like this is the default route or that because we're we just created a name parameter called tab, right? No. So what this is actually going to do is actually handle switching the routes for us. So we could go route and then pass in a parameter to this. This is actually a function call. So we could pass in like say home or something else or. Um, like at any kind of path that we want to do and automatically handle switching for us. Uh, we can leave this as just okay. path equals forward slash and get rid of everything else if we want as well. And that would that would take us to the home page, and then we would have yep. to set up a different route for different paths? Different routes for different paths, yeah. Okay. So um, I've actually never done it the way that you're talking about. So you're talking about basically using this as a as kind of a... a uh, like a function as opposed to setting up different routes for different paths. Like we grab this and then use it as a function to, to display the right things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that because I've never done that. And that sounds like fun. Um, does that mean, does it come in as like a render prop like this? No. So what we actually want to do is we'll go from path and then we'll go support slash colon tab. And then we'll create, um, we'll use, uh, an we'll have an open parentheses and pass in the name of the component we want. In this one? Yep. So we'll just say home. Okay. And then is this a self-closing one then? Yep. It can be a self-closing one. Okay. Actually, so this will actually uh, affect the URL. So we could, we'll have a capital H in here for home. We can keep it a lowercase if we want. Okay. Uh, we could have a few other things. Now we'll also want to pass in a component. And the component is here. And like so. And then we would want, like, I guess for now we can just do home. Okay. And then if I want to set up two of these. There you go. You you uh you have everything working. And would we just do this? Yep. Okay. So let's let's do that. Um now how do we choose these routes? We need links, right? Yes. So we'd either need a link or we could set up our main our main route and redirect. Okay. What's uh how do you do a main route? So essentially, we're going to copy the same route uh, component down here and make our path just a empty, uh, just a forward slash. Okay. And then what we can do instead of passing in a component is use a render prop. Like an actual render prop? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to pass in a function, and all we're going to do is call up uh, is use the component redirect from React Router DOM and redirect to home. Redirect, and then we're just going to redirect 
to and home? this is yep or forward slash. slash home got it yeah. absolute okay. urls are are get me all the time with this okay so let's try what happens reloads redirects to home but we have issues we do have issues um let's look at the stack frame here oh huh. router okay so it doesn't like something about what we did with our router all right well I... these are actually components okay why don't we why don't we get rid of this about and we'll just stick with a forward slash uh, home up here. See if that works. I could be misunderstanding the way that that tab function works. Maximum update depth exceeded. Should we should we get to the docs? Yeah, let's give it a look. Okay, React Router. This is the one that I actually wanted. We're using the web, so we want to see uh, basic routing, right? No, where's your code? So those are our links. All right, it looks like we're just using path directly. Okay, okay, um, cool. Let's jump back in. We'll do here. Uh, actually, let's bring this back and we'll do this. And then it said exact. And let's make this actually here and then we'll skip the redirect. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. And so that, if we come back out here, gives us our home component. Hey, we got something. All right. Then where did this link come from? And that comes so, from the same package. So we're actually going to do things a little bit differently. Okay, cool. So we can actually, it's actually a really good chance to like kind of go over it. So if we go to that uh, browser page or the, uh, what were we in, Chrome? So over here, actually, no, we'll stick on the React Router docs. Got it. Uh, in this example. So over here in the in the code sandbox, what we're essentially doing is creating that router instance and this kind of top level navigation mm -hmm. uh, where we could just navigate to everything, use the link component directly and navigate around. Mm -hmm. This is a little bit of a different paradigm in Ionic or in mobile in general, as we don't necessarily have a link part uh, built out, we'll just use a component and call navigate to go to the different page. Okay. And so when we're doing that, are, is there, does Ionic have something built in to do that? Yep. So what we can actually do is create a new component. What's it going to be called? Uh, we'll call this one menu. Okay. So this menu is going to take uh, a couple of props. So we're going to call pass in history. Uh, so basically, we're just going to grab it, access to uh, React Router's history and be able to use all of that in our navigation. Okay. So inside of here, we're going to return a different kind of component. We could call this uh, a different Ionic component. So we're going to create this component called menu, uh, uh -huh. ion menu from Ionic. Ion menu. OK. And then did you say we only need history, or do we need something else? Yeah, we only need history and okay. the props. And then um, are we doing any logic, or are we just returning the ion menu? 
Uh, we are going to do... Yeah, we're only just going to return ion menu. Okay, so we can switch out to the implicit return. And we've got ion menu. And then... Um, this is going to have a few other components inside of it as well. Okay. So we'll have ion menu, and then we're going to build out a list of kind of menu items. So we can go from uh, our home page to about page, basically clicking individual items in this menu component. Okay. And are these passed as like they're going to be ion item or menu item? It's like you were reading my mind ion item. Yes. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> Um, and then do these have props? Um, nope. So these can be, uh, <coughs> these were actually going to, t uh, attach <clears throat> click handlers to these. So okay. we can actually use, uh, on click and then we're going to call, uh, history and then we can just push the URL that we want to go to. History dot, is it history dot push? Mm -hmm. I don't know why it doesn't. The autocomplete is very odd in here. Okay. Um, and then mm -hmm. the URL that we want is, let's see, for this one, it'll be the home page. So we'll just do home. Mm -hmm. And this one will be about. So we'll do about. Um, okay. And so uh, before we go any further, there, there were a couple questions. Um, the first question that came up is, what benefits does a developer get by using Ionic? Um, so one clarification, we're not using Gatsby today. We're actually, uh, we're using Ionic and like plain React. Um, there is, there was some experimentation that I saw Mike doing previously about using Ionic with Gatsby, but there were some server-side rendering problems that um, are going to be solved, but are not currently solved. So right now, Ionic and Gatsby would not work together without some, some doing. Um, but what, uh, it just, uh, you already kind of talked about this, but maybe just a quick recap. What is the benefit of, of like introducing Ionic into a code base versus just like writing out these components yourself? So it's kind of like a two part way to think about it. Uh, we, we target Ionic to be able to build not only native iOS and native Android, uh, but progressive web apps. And we focus only on using web technology. So it's only HTML, CSS, and JavaScript at the end of the day. Highly styled, but still just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So everything that we're going to create is going to be uh, something that you can reuse, dive into without having to touch native technologies or dive in and learn any little bit of uh, HTML, CSS, or oh, without touching any bit of uh, like Java, Kotlin, Swift, Mm -hmm. iOS, you get this ease of adoption and being able to work with these new, um, being able to deploy to these devices without having to learn native at all. Mm. And it's also, it's a nice little design uh, component or design system component library, whatever you want to call them uh, to get like a really consistent look and feel. Nice. Yeah. Um, and, and it, it like, what I think is kind of cool about this is, is, you know, a lot of apps, especially if you're trying to build something that needs to be cross-platform, um, I've seen really heinous workarounds where you're trying to like build some code one way and then you have to like convert it all over to the, you know, the, the react native thing, or you're trying to like put it into some other, or you've got two teams working on like the same set of designs and the app feels completely different. So this idea of being able to write one code base that it, and can you, you can just like write this code base and then kind of deploy it wherever. I mean, obviously this one wouldn't because we're using the browser router, but like if you, if you were a little more thoughtful about how your views were set up, you can just like put this code anywhere. Right. Yeah, more or less. Like we have, we have a couple other tools and uh, libraries that we've been working on and work with uh, to get apps in the app store using. This is still going. That's still at the end of the day using a browser routing mechanism. Because mm -hmm. really, at the end of it all, it's just creating that web view in the native layer, and that's fairly easy to do. And then we can build out the entirety of our app using uh, these components and have this consistent uh, look and feel that adapts to each of these platforms. And we can simulate that actually uh, in the browser with some of the dev tools. Nice, cool. Um, 
Awesome. And then the other question is, what do you think about React hooks? Uh, I think React hooks are great. What do you think about React hooks? Um, I see the I see the benefit in the what they're trying to solve. Uh, I think I think you can get pretty hairy really quickly um, if you're trying to over engineer or over architect like your app and make sure that everything is as possibly small. It needs to be broken down into different pieces and separate functions. Mm. It all needs to be unit tested. So you so you uh, don't want to you don't want to overhook is what you're saying, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's no longer a hook it's a slice at that point <laughs> a little, little golf pun if anyone knows golf related uh, terms no no you got the wrong wrong crowd here um <laughs> okay just hang my head in shame so cool all right we've got um so I, i've got the menu set up here we're accepting mm -hmm. the history prop and upon clicking one of these items it should take us to one of our routes uh where do we get this history prop from? So history is actually going to be automatically applied from the browser router. So we actually don't even need to set that. Ooh, magic. Everybody's favorite. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So let me, uh, let me save this. We'll come out here and what and we should see. Oh, no. Is something. Yeah. So by default, actually, let's open up. This is really great. We'll look at the... Uh, at the DOM real quick. So if we open up the dev tools and look at the elements, we'll extend out into root. Oh, that's what I'm looking for. Yep. Got our ion, ion app, menu. ion menu. And what we're actually going to see is this menu component. We'll have our list items, but the menu is actually going to be uh, off to the side and we don't really need to like, we're not really gonna be able to interact with it right away because it has no idea of like, what should the menu be attached to? Okay. So if you think about it, like any mobile app, there's like this a point where you can have a menu that you can swipe and open it up and reveal it from the side. Okay. So, so we need what to give it like a button or something. We are, we're going to add a button or we could add uh, the swipe gesture or this click gesture that we're going to, uh, that we can wire up right now, actually. Yeah, let's do it. Also, really, really quickly, um, because I think this is this is something that I don't know a lot about. I've I've heard some about, um, and I imagine this is probably new for for some other folks. Uh, how did y'all get these these cool little custom element names in here? So um, the real magic with Ionic is that it's all uh, custom elements, and web components, really. At the end of the day, so all these. Uh, React components that we're writing are just a quick and easy way for us to take these web components that we've written and make them work well in a React context. So that way, okay. React understands how to pass props down to them, how to work with the events. Because React has synthetic events, we need mm -hmm. to figure out a way to wire up what would be traditional browser events uh, and have that play nicely with React's uh, whole system. So, so so basically this is this is a way to use web components in React. Yep. That's pretty slick. And like, you know, good thing to note about it is that this little shadow root over here, we can if we inspect that, we have like so much more that we could do with it and where we could uh lay content out in how these components like at a very grand at a very small level are built out mm -hmm. but by default we don't ever have to think about that we nice. just know here's my item and it automatically updates and handles where things should be placed how things should be laid out yeah that's cool and it's got like i mean you can see here it's got its own little style sheet attached and that's uh that's pretty pretty awesome um do so i so you said by default we don't have to think about that so i don't even need to really know that we're using web components here that's just kind of like a neat piece of information right it's a it's a i would like to think build artifact the fact that you are building with react is probably the more interesting part that people are going to want to know mm -hmm. uh web components just happens to be these really low level what we could think of as leaf components. Like 
React doesn't really care about the internal state of these components. They can self-manage and update. All React needs to know is at a higher level, state has changed or props have changed, re-render. Got it. That's pretty interesting. And so, and this is cool too, because like, you know, a lot of times the, the argument that you hear is like, you should use the platform or, you know, you should use React. And this is kind of an instance where you're, I mean, and like, it's, I personally, I kind of think like the use the platform argument is a little silly because like React does use the platform. Um, but this is even like going a step further with that, where you're, you're literally saying like, no, you, you can use the platform. You can use web components and use react. And so you're kind of getting the, the best of both worlds here where you can use the platform for what the platform's good at. You can use react for what react is good at and not necessarily have to like pick and choose. Um, right. But yeah. That's, that's pretty cool. I like that. And it's like, it definitely makes a whole lot more sense. Like if you think about large scale teams and across companies, some teams might want to use React. We also support things like Angular. We also support Vue. Like you have that Yeah, I saw that on the homepage. We had, where was it? There was a thing that showed like all the different, it was like, yeah, you can use it with all of the things. Um, and then it also works with, yeah, like that's, that's pretty, pretty cool that you can just kind of plug it into whatever yeah it's really it's 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 pretty awesome if you know to be a little little pat on the back <laughs> that's good i mean you know this is it's good to it's good to be proud of the stuff that you're working on um and with that being said can you show me how to get this menu to show up on the screen <laughs> <laughs> all right so what we'll do is inside of the menu, we're actually going to add a property to this or on the menu itself. And it's going to be called uh, content ID. And ID is going to be capital ID. And like we're just going to pass B. it a, uh, Yeah, no, you have it right. Okay. Uh, let's spell it there. And we're going to pass in a string. Okay. Uh, we'll just call it main. It's just a name. Just uh, just needs some kind of string reference that we're going to uh, connect to. Okay. Um, as we scroll further down, let's go back to our main kind of uh, our main root. So menu will get rendered here, mm -hmm. and then we'll have our routes. Let's wrap the routes with another Ionic component. Okay. And we'll just gonna call it Ion Pain uh, Page. Ion Page. Oh, my auto import is working again. Cool. So now I have an ion page mm -hmm. that appears to have. Now we have, we missed one, oh. one thing. Okay. Content ID is main. Got it. Right. Now we're going to give an ID to this ion page of main. Ah, okay. So this is like the, pro like the way it'll, connect and figure out where to display this content. I, okay, so I understand. So you're basically like, you're attaching the navigation to like a landmark in the page. Right, so internally, the way that this <clears throat> is being set up is it'll listen for gestures and figure out if, if I'm on Android, should I overlay, the overlay this kind of content? Or if I'm on iOS, should the content move and the menu is stationary? Oh, interesting. Okay. So, so now that this go over here, yeah. Oh, we okay. That's cool that that worked. That's kind of unintuitive though. Agreed. It's not necessarily the clearest thing. So, what we'll actually do is add one more component and have this display automatically on larger screens and then on smaller screens, it'll hide the menu. Uh, into like that kind of draw style. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and from inside the Ion app, we're going Here. to create Ion Split Pane or add Ion Split Pane. And is that? That okay. will go ahead and wrap everything uh, before the closing Ion uh, app component. Okay. Now, same way with the menu, it needs to know what is going to be the main content. So we'll pass in a content ID prop and just set that to main. Okay. 
Anything else? Nope, that's it. Awesome. Oh, cool. All right. Okay. So now, so now we have that kind of split out. These, uh, uh oh. Hmm. We can get back to that. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, let's, uh, jump here. Okay. Okay. So if these are, you know, because we have everything displayed with Flexbox, we have the home uh, item and then the about item kind of displayed far opposite ends. Not really great what we, uh, and really what we would want. So what we can do is actually add a, another Ionic component to this menu to take the items and put it in a content. So we'll create, we'll add ion content in here. And it will uh, wrap the ion items. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, geez. Okay. There we go. <laughs> okay. So we've done that. Okay. So that, now they're now they're down at the bottom. Nope. Now they're up at the top. Yeah. So that is essentially resetting all the flex properties gotcha. that we have. Yeah and aligning things in a proper way. Okay. Now, let's go back to our our uh, our app. Things are starting to get a little bit of a busy. Did you want to make a new file or did you want to keep everything in in here cuz Yeah, we can we can drop things out. Let's uh like what are we what are we done with here? Do we want to drop the menu out? Yeah, we're we're pretty much done with menu. We don't really need to worry about it. All right, let's do the menu.js. All right, and so I need to pull in uh, some of this stuff. And we don't need this one or these North. two. Okay, and then... Okay. Here is where, and here's where we'll get actually access to the router. So in menu, import menu from menu. Okay, so in menu, we're going to export uh, a new instance of this, uh, but we're actually going to wrap this with um, with router from uh... React Router DOM. I understand. Okay, so that, yeah, that makes sense. So we need, uh, and this is a higher order component mm -hmm. from React Router DOM. Um, higher order components are kind of like it, it takes in a component, adds more props to it, and then returns that component. So it's, it's basically the, this is not magic now because with router is going to add in the, the router props. So that, that makes more sense that this, um, this feels way less magic to me. <laughs> okay. So if we do I was, that, I was, try, I was trying to play a little bit too ahead of myself. Uh, what by yeah. setting all that up now, this is cool. Okay. But now it works. So now that we've added yeah. the router, we've got, uh, we've got a functional kind of navigation happening here, which is, which is pretty cool. Um, let's see. And so time checking, we're about halfway. Uh, do we have, do you think we've got the bandwidth to do? A full-on to-do app, or do you want to kind of do some some page styles? Maybe show off some of the the layout components. Yeah, let's. I think I probably won't probably won't make it to the full uh, full to-do app, but we'll we'll add some stuff to the pages because uh, we can start getting into animations that get automatically handled on route transitions. Ooh, yeah, let's definitely do that. All right, so. Uh, from here, we're going to want to work with our home and about components. Okay. And do you want um, me to drop these into separate? Yeah, let's drop those in separate files. We'll uh, okay. we'll do the home first uh, because more or less it's going to be a copy and paste for about. But we can handle that uh, another way. But we can just copy that content over afterwards. Okay. So we've got this. We're going to do import React from React. And then we're going to export default home. Yep. Um, that should give us, assuming I didn't typo anything. Okay, still works. Um, Great. 
So we'll do a quick um, default return. So we'll wrap this with parens, uh, and then we'll start adding essentially a header bar. Um, the way we do this with Ionic is we have a component called Ion Header. Okay, Ion Header. And do I wrap everything with that? Nope. We'll we'll uh, we'll create our we'll add another component inside of this. So header itself is like a uh, one of these top level components that handles flex layout. And inside of this uh, header, we're going to actually create uh, a, another component called toolbar. Toolbar. Now this does this is one that we need to create custom. Uh, no, actually, we can we can reuse Ionix because it provides it itself. So we'll just use Ion Toolbar. Oh, Ion Toolbar, got it. Ion Toolbar. And then inside of here, we have yet another Ionic component to set the title. So we'll have Ion Title. Okay. And this can be whatever we want. We this could be our our home text from uh, down below. Okay. Now that that's done, we can kind of we can delete the paragraph tag. Got it. And we already have a little bit of the animations uh, being kicked in. So at that ion router outlet, whenever it has it, this is part of the benefits of web components and having this encapsulation. Okay. So ion router outlet will automatically handle uh, listen for these uh, wait changes in components. Did we miss a step? Because I this is the first time hearing of Ion Router Outlet. Nope, that should be. Oh, we did miss a step. Ah. Uh. <laughs> it's okay. Oh. We would we would have caught it pretty quick. <laughs> um. So I right. I made the assumption that we were gonna have a header and like a body. Do we not need this wrapper? No, we uh we we probably do need this wrapper. Um, okay, I'll keep it then. Yeah, we'll keep it. Uh, right. But we can add some more content, like a body, actual, like an actual main content area, uh, in a bit. Okay. So inside Ion Page, we're going to add Ion Router Outlet. Ion Router Outlet. Mm -hmm. And then it's wraps. going to wrap the routes. Okay. Does so need any props as or anything? we, what's that? Does that need any props or anything? Nope, it's uh, it's has no props that it can accept. Um, okay. It will go ahead and as we change out the components that we want to route, it'll handle. Okay, this component is leaving. Let me animate it in a certain way. This component is entering. Let me animate it in a different way. Gotcha. So, our home uh, component right now, because it's the default route, it'll just have its own. It it shouldn't have its own animation. But as we navigate to say about, it'll have its other animation. So if okay. we go to the browser. Okay, let me make sure I saved everything. I did, okay. Okay, so now we've actually got like a header up here. Mm-hmm. Cool. So, so animations look a little funky because we had, uh, because of an about page being uh, not just a, a paragraph yet. tag. Yeah. But we have animations. Yeah. I mean, things are happening. Yeah, that's... <laughs> so, things are happening. So... We can add actually this content area down yeah. here, down below, and we can start to add it a little bit more. So we'll add ion content. Ion content. Mm -hmm. And inside of there, we'll add uh, ion list. Okay. Now we could add a couple different list items. So ion items in here. Um, basically, we'll we could add like three or four of them. But just enough to get like some uh, stuff in there. Okay. Um, so let's name stuff we like: beards. Mm. Uh, guitars. What else? Guitars. My, my small collection in the back. <laughs> um, and let's say bourbon. Okay. So we've got our list. Mm -hmm. If we come back out here, go to the home page. All right. We've got our list of things that we like. Yeah, and you know it'd be really nice if we had uh, different icons that we could, you know, place 
either on the left or on the right side of them. Mm -hmm. So we're actually going to add those. Okay. Um, inside of the items, we're going to use a new component called Ionicon or Ion Icon. Sorry. I Ionicon. I think you should go with that. No, we actually, this is a component that uses a icon library that we created called Ionicon. Nice. <laughs> okay. Um, and then I assume that we, I like say which, which icon I want. Yep. So it accepts a prop of name. Name. And then this could be any kind of string. And we have the whole entire site is like its own mini app. Uh, and there is, n yep, ionicons.com. Okay. And you can like search for all these different icons and see the material design and the iOS design. Unfortunately, there is no beard icon. Well, I this is clearly a useless library then. Um. <laughs> I okay, feel like I need, I, I'm disappointing my, my own beard. <laughs> Let's uh okay so let's add I don't know we'll we'll just we'll just pick some let's do the um uh, paper plane so this one is called paper plane got it all right and then we can come down here is there a guitar icon there should be no what no. uh what we can do instead though is do musical note. Yes. Musical note. Was it singular or plural? Uh, well, there's two versions of it, so. Okay. And then for this, do drink. Uh, no. No. Just uh, do cup. Cup. If I can spell. Cool. Cup. Uh, and that one is called cafe. cafe. All right. Let's go cafe. And now we have our very sensible icons that definitely make sense. Um, <laughs> well, we have them, but I don't think they're laid out correct. Like the, the best way that we could do this. Okay. Um, so if we look at them, they're really kind of like pushed up against the text. They're, they're, there's really no breathing room or good like design uh, spacing here. So uh -huh. we're actually going to use an aspect of these web components to lay them in a specific spot. Okay. So the way ion item works is internally there is what is called accepted like uh, rent uh, spots for it uh, to hold like placeholders. These are called it slots. Slots. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I saw that when um, I'm actually just going to pull up the dev tools again, because I saw that when we were looking at them. Um, mm -hmm. So let's get the ion item. And if I look at the ion item, I've got slots. And now I've never mm -hmm. seen this component before, which leads me to believe that this is something that uh, web components do. Right. So web components uh, is part of web components in this shadow DOM uh, where we can essentially create placeholder content. Okay. Where it says, all right, inside of this component, I'm going to give it a um, I'm going to give it a slot. And this slot could have a name. So as I build out my you know, use this web component, if I want to put something and render it in this specific location, all the user needs to do is say slot equals and then pass that name. And so, so we've in this got case, we have start and end. Yep. Okay. And so we want to try, let's see, we'll, let's put, put this one at the front. So this is going to be slot start. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then this one, let's put it at the end. Let's get really creative with our layout. I know. <laughs> and now what we should get is alternating icons. Yep. Ooh, cool. So, so I mean, it's a little bit more design room too. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's, uh, I mean, I think that gets a little funky. So let's go all to the left, but I dig it. And that's really nice because it like doesn't, I, I was I was about to go in there and like add a, add a space and, you know, like you start thinking about doing some inline styles. So knowing that you can just drop this into a slot is actually really nice. 
Right. It it gets to this really nice part where most people don't care how that component like gets where it get or how it gets rendered or how it gets placed. They just know that here are the spots that I can place it. And mm -hmm. it's it's kind of like an API for HTML mm -hmm. because now it has all these accepted parameters and I don't really have to worry about uh, figuring out how to lay things out. Yeah. Yeah, that is that is really nice. Um, okay. So what else should we do? How do, how do we get to like a, a, a like the smooth animation? Because, you know, like you said, right now it gets a little goofy because we've mm -hmm. got just the, the plain paragraph. So is there something else you want to add to this page or do you want to? No, let's start going over to about because that's where we're going to add some pretty uh, nice stuff. Okay, so let's just start by copying this a boot. This is the, the Canadian version. Um, a boot, let's eh? <laughs> let's go about, and that'll be our starting point. I will then get rid of this, and let's do that. All right, so now we've got our about page is being imported, and mm -hmm. it's currently an almost exact copy of the home page, except it says about at the top. Um, but we can already see that those animations look pretty slick. Like it's uh, so, it act so we can actually demo this. If we go over into the dev tools, they have this really nice preview of devices. So over here at that top row, we'll come in from the second icon on the left. Here, got it. Yep. Okay, so and then things are going to get weird because I'm on a tiny little screen. Um, let's see what <laughs> we can do. Android. Yeah, we'll do Android. And okay. we'll... Oh, no. So we get those animations, but we don't actually have... They're like, like they're a way there, to close. but they're We're animating it. Yeah. So, so you can see it happening. Fix... Okay. So inside of our menu component, we're going to wrap wrap the ion item with a different uh, uh, different component. We're going to wrap it with ion menu toggle. Ion menu. I'm going to wrap the ion menu or the content. Nope, the item itself. The item. The whole like yep. each item. And each item. Ideally, you would do this in like say a map and be able to iterate over all these, but. We'll just do this in line. Okay, so we've got this. We'll put that in here. Make sure that I actually did not. Let's see, ion menu toggle. And then we'll do the same thing here. Oh, God. Okay, we're getting there. It's going to happen. Ion menu toggle. And I have an error in my syntax somewhere. Ion menu toggle. Oh, it auto closed up here for you. Thanks, VS Code. You're being very helpful. Um, okay. <laughs> this is why I just use Notepad. <laughs> yeah, right. I just write my code out by hand and scan it in. Um, no, this is uh, okay. So we've got that. We now have. Let's see. Did it reload? Yes, I think. I think so. Aha! Look at that. So now, when I click, it auto closes. Yeah, I, like I like it, which is really nice. We can also have another menu-related component to instead of swiping that menu, we could actually place like a little button that the user will be able to press and like programmatically open it up. I think that seems like a good idea because it is definitely like like that's cool that that works, but it is really not, not intuitive. Clear. <laughs> yeah, it. It's either you just have to know or you're given like a little tutorial and no one likes a tutorial. Right. Everybody hates tutorials. <laughs> um, okay. So how, I say how would... as we're going through a tutorial. Right. Exactly. Um, all right, cool. So how do we, how do we do this? So in home. In home. Mm -hmm, we created that little toolbar at the top. Well, just like item, toolbar has like its own specific slot for placing content either on the uh, on one side of the item or on the other side. 
So okay. we're going to use slot and this other component called ion menu button and be able to uh, lay this out. Okay. And the so this could be self is... This could be start. Start. Mm hmm. And it can and be, yes, yeah, self closing. A, do I need to give it like a content ID or anything? Nope. It automatically, it'll just at a, it'll call its own function um, that is a higher level one that'll okay. say if there's a menu, open it. Got it. So, so this is get to the home page where we added it. Cool. Okay. So now we have a menu button. Great. Mm -hmm. And if I just take the same thing, drop it into our about page. And so what we're, what we're learning here is that we would want to end up abstracting a lot of this out into, uh, into shared components because we're doing some, we're doing a lot of duplicative stuff here. But yeah. So there's definitely places where this can be optimized and mm -hmm. uh, tweaked. But this is pretty slick. Okay, so that's what we want there. And then is this going to change if I use a different device? Yeah, so let's go to that drop down and pick a pick an Apple -y device. Let's do an iPhone 6. Okay. And what it. we'll do is reload, actually. Re reload. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, look at that. It's a totally different thing. Right. So oh, that's we actually, it's really nice. We'll see that. What? It'll move the main content. Holy crap. Okay, so now is this like is this an absolute nightmare to maintain? <laughs> Was that the wrong so, question to ask? No, I will I will say. So there has been it's actually pretty easy to do. Um iOS like creates these really detailed component design kits. Okay. And uh, like definitions, like here is how this component should behave and how it should look. Material design also does this. There okay. have been few notable instances though in the past where you kind of just bang your head against the wall, like why? And that is with the iPhone 10 mm. and iOS 7 when that came out and it was completely different and there was all these translucent different layers uh, that completely through everything for a loop is like, well, I guess we have to redesign a lot of things. But thankfully yeah. it hasn't changed too much. Cool. Yeah. I mean it it looks it looks like uh I mean it, like this this is this is slick. Like I'm I'm kind of teasing a little bit, but I love the I, I I really do like how it just adapted to the feel of whatever device it's on. And now it's gonna do this like if so if I open this on my I like I've got the the pixel if I open up my Pixel, it's just going to know that it's on a Pixel and show me an Android native-ish experience. Yeah, it'll automatically uh, adapt to each of those platforms and figure out, it's like, all right, how should we animate this page in? How should we actually do like that little ripple animation that Material Design has? Mm. So yeah. we can actually go to our, if we actually go, to, let's, let's take a look at that ripple real quick because that's pretty nice. Okay. Let's um, yeah, let's go to a, a let's go to a pixel. I'm gonna reload, get the the Android styles, um, and now we need to add uh, what the ripple happens on buttons, right? Yeah, it'll, it'll actually happen on the buttons. So in it really doesn't matter what page we do it in at this point. Um, we'll just add yeah, ion button. Ion button. Any props or? Uh, we'll add a click handler to this. On click. And we can just log out the event to the console because we don't really care about it too much. Okay, which means I actually need to get that event. And then we'll say, make it ripple. And that's gonna be really confusing for people who aren't on Android. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got about, we go to the home page. It's cool. All right, let me zoom in. And you can see it's doing so it's the ripple. context aware. It knows where the animation should happen. That's, that is a, sli I mean, that's, it's one of those cool things. It's like such a subtle little thing that is uh, probably an enormous pain to actually implement, but it just like adds that 
tiny little bit of like, oh, wow, the button knows where my finger is. <laughs> it's it's really nice. It's um, just it knows that nice feedback. Uh, mm -hmm. There are some parts where it's like, all right, just just click and let me do the thing. I don't need to see the whole animation. And this is like on native Android as well. It's like, all right, speed it up. Get the job. Get going. But it's nice that you have that that kind of haptic feedback. Yeah, that is that is really cool. Um, awesome. So, what else? Uh, what else should we show off here? What are what are some other goodies? Uh, well, let's take a look at uh, back buttons. So, if you noticed in uh, in about when we go to the about page, we really have to either drag the menu out again or go ahead and switch everything to go back to the home. Mm -hmm. But we're creating browser history, so it would be great if we could just have a back button automatically handle that for us. Right. So in about, we're actually going to introduce uh, Ion back button. And is that up here? Yep, that could be right in the toolbar. So Ion back button actually has a few different, uh, can be self-contained, uh, and we can place it in the start slot as well. Okay, hold on. How, what? Like, isn't this going to break because it's putting two things in the same slot? No. So slot doesn't really care about what you want to put into it. Like, you could put multiple things. Uh, you'll get cases where you'll want to order things. So if you want something to appear on the left side and the right side, uh, Wait, slot will automatically handle that. Ion back button. I put it in the slot. All right. So really here's missing. from the cool part. A ba uh, ion back button is history aware, right? So if we go to home, reload the page. Oh, I saw it for a second. Did you see that? Yeah. Watch. It so shows we, up and then it's gone. So if we go to the home page. Okay. And then let's just do a quick reload. Reload. Now go to about again. About, and I see oh, it and no. then it disappears. Do I need to change right, the let's, order? Let's let's debug this real quick. I'm gonna try it over here. It what is my menu order. gonna disappear now? No, the order shouldn't really matter at this case. Home. About, and it appears and disappears. All right, so let's try this. Let's go ahead and we'll start off on home. Start off on home. Mm hmm And let's go back to our editor. Okay. And let's just get rid of the menu button just to test it out for now. And we can comment it out. And save, and we'll test to see if it actually will appear. Okay. And did that actually finish reloading? I assume it does. Yeah. Yeah, it compiled, but... Okay, so let's... Appear... And it uh, appears and then disappears. So it's like it's losing our history. I did we... mention that this was beta. Now, question here. We're not, like, providing any history to the about thing. Yep. So on our app, we're wrapping it with a router, but it doesn't really have a way. Well, I guess maybe component injects that stuff. So at the top level, Iron Router Outlet will automatically get uh will handle that history for us it'll automatically okay. tell all right there's history show the back button okay mm. i am a little annoyed that it's not doing that right now but uh, actually here's what we can do we can uh look at a really more kind of complete demo app to uh see like what's going on and see how this works. So if we go to GitHub, we'll go to Ionic team, Ionic hyphen team. Uh, and then we'll go to Ionic hyphen react hyphen conference hyphen app. <laughs> okay. Cool. The amount of times I've actually need to know the difference between a forward slash and a hyphen really annoy me. So okay, all right, okay, like a, we got things going on. Right, we have a full kind of app example in here. 
where we're loading up content, we're loading up like uh, maps and speaker uh, session details. Uh-huh. Um, what's going on? Why did that break? Uh, we'll go to schedule actually, because we want to have some kind of schedule. Uh, schedule. We'll go breakfast. So there's our there back button. There will be back button. Okay, so that does what we want it to do. Let's go back to the app. Should we be able to see this? Like if I go Get poke in here, session list. Actually, so we make, we're working on our like starting uh, templates for all this. And we have some pretty uh, strong opinions about how this should actually work. So if we go back, we don't necessarily, we create components as like their reusable pieces, like so that um, header oh. component that we, but we say, if you're going to have a URL associated it, we're going to put this in pages. Okay. That, yeah, that, that seems right. That's kind of the same, same thing that, uh, that yes, Gatsby does. does. Right. So, okay. So we have so our schedule. Schedule page. And then do we have the Ionic? back button or ion back button so it wouldn't have in here but it would be in the session list session like session, session detail details, darn. yeah back button. back button do we need to add any of that You know, right. let's try that. Let's see, route component props. Yeah, okay, let's let's add a go back. Um, and what did it set, let's see. This gets set by session detail is used by, does this one use it? No, it'd be used in the app, it's uh, in the uh, app stack app stack so this is going to be a little bit of a different layout because this is more of an advanced thing with uh those tabs yeah okay i'm just trying to figure out where that go back actually gets set so we can see what the value is um let's just set one and see what it does we've got this back button go back and they just had a that's not that's not right. That's not what we want. Let's just return true. Um, then this is our app. So we can go home. We can go to about now. Nah, it's uh, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm Let's just go back to the app again. Okay. So we'll start off. Well, no, actually, our React app. Our React app. Yeah, let's start off on home because like I said, it's tied to the navigation and even during like reloads, uh, it'll reset this internal uh, state of where our app is regardless of browser URL. Okay. So we'll just reload the page real quick. Go to home, uh, go to menu, go to about. Oh, I'm gonna have to open an issue about this because this is annoying. Actually, why don't we just check out the docs? because that provides some really good uh, examples. Okay, docs, so, documentation. Uh, UI <clears> components. <throat> UI components. Let's find the Scroll. back button. And now, let's see, react, back button. It does show this go back. Let me, let me instead of doing the true, let me return the empty object. Um, does it need anything else? It does allow you to specify a few other things like custom text and icons, but the go back should just be all you need. Yeah. And let's see the default, default href. href. Yeah, yeah, none of that, none of that. Should be good. Yeah, all right, let's, let's just give it a shot. Okay, so we've got this. Coming back out here. We are doing a full refresh. Doesn't like us. 
doesn't like us. The demo gods have uh, looked down on us today. <laughs> I guess that's the that's the way of it. Um, but oh, for the is... most part, everything really just works. Yeah, I mean it, and it's it. Uh, I'm sure that this is something silly that we're doing. That's just not not fully documented here. Um, cause let's see, we set all these things. We set the go back. Let me just one more time. I'm just going to copy paste this exactly as is. And we're going to, now that's the same thing. I didn't typo that. Um, <laughs> it could, it could just be an error in, uh, the package itself. Like I said, it's still a beta. So there's, there are bound to be some edge cases here and there. Um, okay. And you know, this is probably one of them. But we have that animation kind of working. We have the components being able to render out and switch around. Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 looking cool. It's doing uh, it's doing most of what we want it to do. And that like that back button, you know, we can see in this uh, in this demo, um, is very cool. If I can get when to, it when it wants to work. Where's the demo? Uh, yeah. So get in. We look at breakfast. We've got a back button there. Um. Like this is this is slick and this this looks like a native app. I mean, it's obviously like anything that uses material design kind of picks that up. But like I'm also just noticing a couple things that are really cool here, like this um this sticky time slot header and little things like that. Like that's that's a pretty cool setup to have. And that's actually just built into the browser. Like so there's not a whole lot in there that we have to do. Other than just set position sticky. Nice, I do love position sticky. I was so happy when that uh, that hit a level of support that you could actually start using it. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, so we have a couple questions that came in on the chat. the The first one is: Does it need the ion buttons or ion toolbar components like the docs example? Uh, that is a good question. So we've got the ion toolbar. Do we need to add ion buttons? Let's give that a shot. And we so, just yeah, ion, ion buttons. buttons is like its own kind of wrapper top level component. So okay. that could actually be what it was. All right. And we would be able to just remove slot from ion back button altogether or just move that to the uh, top level button or ion buttons. Sorry. Hmm. It doesn't like that. I think we would need to. Wait, wait. Yeah, this let's would, where let's this get rid of this slot over here on menu and put it on, and on buttons. Yeah, we'll put it on buttons and get rid of it from the subcomponents. Okay. Okay, so that fixed our layout. Let's go to home. I'm gonna hard refresh. We're going back to about. Oh, it was there for a second. Ah. Uh, this is know. going to bother me, so I'm gonna have to recreate this. Um, okay. Well, I'll I'll publish this code once we once we wrap up. And then the other question was, will that work in just the web browser rather than the device emulator? Um, it's a good question. No, it uh, it doesn't seem to like either. Um, but what is cool? Let's see. The Ripple does in fact work on just like regular Chrome. So that's awesome. Uh, Mike, we got about 10 minutes left. Do you want to show anything else? Or we can also call it here and uh, you can go file some bugs. <laughs> file some bugs and uh, actually fix some stuff. Um, yeah, I, would, I guess I would just say there uh, where we do, if you do want to try this and uh, would like to give us feedback, uh, we, we're actively trying to get this uh, ready and ship final. Uh, it's beta right now. Uh, like I said, there are <laughs> there are some edge cases, uh, edge cases and bugs uh, for sure. Uh, but we'd love to see you know if anyone you know was watching this uh, afterwards wants to get a uh, try and let us know if it how well this goes. Um, yeah, definitely uh, reach out and let us know your thoughts. Cool. Okay, so uh, from there, I'm going to post a link to the conference app 
so that people can check that out. Um, I will also post this code up there. And if anybody has any questions for Mike or myself, now would be the time to ask him in the chat. Um, Mike, people can follow you on Twitter at M Hardington. Um, where else should they look for you or uh, Ionic? Uh, they can follow Ionic on Twitter, uh, twitter.com, Ionic Framework. Okay. Uh, I'm is... basically on there all the time. Uh, I, I post a lot of pictures of my cats. <laughs> framework. Uh, so there is the Ionic Framework. You should go check that out. Um, cool, man. Well, this was super fun. Uh, and just for everybody watching, uh, thank you so much for, for joining up. Um, coming up soon, we are going to do, uh, you know, we do a live stream every Thursday. I am still ironing out the details of exactly when these are going to happen, but we've got one coming up with uh, Henry Zhu. We're going to build a uh, Gatsby theme for his podcast, Hope and Source. And um, we're going to be taking some work that Amberly Romo did and building on top of that to make it uh, even even more powerful, showing off some of the cool things that Gatsby themes can do. Um, and we've got other ones coming down the pipeline. I desperately need to update my Twitch page with details, so keep an eye on that. And please uh, go follow Mike on Twitter, follow Ionic on Twitter, uh, give, it a, give it a chance, like play with it a little bit, it's super fun. And follow this Twitch stream so that you can learn more stuff with me while I learn it. Mike, thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me. It's been great. All right. Uh, thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time.